Have we got audio? Mm -hmm. And go ahead and tell me who you are, where we are. My name is Bryant Tillman, and we are at the 4731 Gallery in Detroit, 4731 Grand River. And you came to be at this place how? I was showing here intermittently throughout the 2000s uh, when the building was owned by its former proprietor, Rick Geyer. His theory was that of, uh, of um, arts incubation and self-entrepreneurial ventures within the art context. And of course, artists need the space with right. low rent in order to um, to um, execute. Um, I came in doing shows intermittently and I got to know Rick pretty well. Uh, I had curated shows here while Rick had owned the building and uh, due to circumstances beyond his control, he lost control of this building and the building he had formerly down the street at the same time. That was 555's old address. Okay. 555 was another arch group. Well, I took over the 555 building <coughs> briefly while Rick was resettling his financial situation. When that fell through, Rick was forced to vacate both properties and he turned it over to an asset management group that was helping him in the process. And one of the members of that group branched away from the asset management group to start a rental business here. He owned other properties. He, he, he uh, broke away from his own company to take over the buildings. And when he did, he adopt, adopted um, Rick Geyer's philosophy of an arts incubator space. And from there, I was here all along. I just came with the building with, with Rick Geyer's recommendation. Great. And I took over, well, I had both the 5 5 building and this building for a brief time. Then I settled in here. So, how long have you been in charge here? Uh, about two, three years. Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> formerly, two or three years, I did uh, the uh, painting invitational in 2011, so that's like three years. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to cut real quick. Mm -hmm. So, Brian, what would you say is your main focus at the gallery? main focus is to provide a base for artists to exhibit their work in the, custom, in the manner that they're accustomed to over the years. Uh, we Detroit artists have a unique flavor and a, a unique demographic. There's your artists and then there's your Detroit artists. Okay. And to a certain extent, they're, they're this our particular group of artists, our gang, and some of them are of an older generation. And right away I've noticed that um, there's a bit of a separation between the new school and the old school. The old school won't give up. They're, they define the area, they define the entire uh, demographic. And places like this is, are essential for them to uh, um, to exhibit their work, and we keep our commissions low. We we interact with the community readily, and uh, and, and Derek gets it. You know, he started his own little interaction, his own little enterprise. I say little; it's actually huge. It's bigger than me. It's right. the Grand River Creative Quarter. Okay, and which he brings in uh, graffiti artists, which Rick Geyer actually. We got a lot to thank 555 for because it was, they, we got the idea for them to bring in the, uh, the street artists out of, the, out of obscurity, you know. Right, right. Rick's looking at this as, well, I don't, I'm not sure who Banksy is, but we got plenty of these guys all over the viaducts. We were bringing them in. And that's how we got the, uh, most of the graffiti artists out of the cold and into legitimacy. And from there, they're in and out. One, one of the main uh, graffiti artists of Detroit is upstairs. He's got a studio upstairs. Awesome. You know, he's got print shop, makes T-shirts and everything, you know. And you have little skateboard parties upstairs. <laughs> so uh, specifically, how does 3741 contribute to the artistic community? I have no idea how 3741 
contribute. 4731. All right, let's. 47. 47. I'm backwards. I'll stay that. I'll, I'll start that again. So tell me how, uh, how your gallery contributes to the artistic community. Well, even in case of a, of a Grand River Creative Quarter, there's a urban, a beginnings of an urban revitalization by having the type of artwork on the walls of the, the, the owner's permission, with the owner's right, permission. Right. So it's about revitalization going on there. And Derek's is going to be opening up another entertainment venue down the street. And just a couple blocks down, I keep forgetting the address, but it's, it's a, close to being opening soon. It will be open this year. And uh, 555 4731 is still an active gallery as well as an right. entertainment venue. Right. So we have a local appeal. I'm looking to start up a new season and get the buzz going again. Okay. We'll see soon. That's funny when I when you say new season, I'm I'm thinking the DSO just basically ended their season recently and uh we'll take up the slack. Right, right. We'll, we'll put out print out the brochures and the t shirts, <laughs> you know, the new season at forty seven thirty one. And let's go along with that flow. So is there any anything really exciting somebody uh, noteworthy or new that you got coming into the gallery in the next year? Uh, we, we find them when we find them. Uh, we have lots of past artists who showed interest in, in the gallery. Um, I was uh, uh, honored and privileged to have Tyree Guyton as a guest at one of our openings. You know, he doesn't actually go to every opening, so I was pleased to see him that, in that particular show. And uh, we have... See, so many of the artists are already stars in their own right that it's difficult for me to pick one out from the other. Right. You know, I can just pick them at random. Uh, but uh, what the thing about 4731 is that, at least f from the standpoint of me interacting with it, uh, we bring in these, these stalwart generational artists who really changed the situation in Detroit as far as what is considered a, a, a public or cultural resource and what isn't. Like, uh, uh, right, specifics. Well, I can go to the beginning of the problems. Like, uh, okay, sure. two decades ago, we got someone called John Engler. Oh, yeah. Who just kicks the whole institution to the curb. For whatever reason, I'm not going to. Speak ill of the dead. Sure. But as, when we faced an, an, a bigger existential situation around 2005, not only are the artists are all out of the cold without much in the way of recourse, but their their general their general level of proficiency was they were putting out bad art. The depression <laughs> within them was seen to be taking over. There was a what do you call it? The Malays? Right. And they were in desperate situation. I credit Trina Erickson of Scarab Club for organizing a meeting between artists, whoever was interested. Uh, um, I have documented that in a, in a letter, in a, in a um, what's the matter with this thing? And uh, we got together and we made a decision that uh, the, uh, the, sol the, the solutions to the problems aren't going to go away unless we affect them. And we made all the points that the art community are now using today. Um, the use of the internet, which is, it, it, it got to the point where we were wondering, what did we do before it? You know, right. I remember right. the paper flyers and the cards. Yeah. I, it was enough then because that's all there was. When we found out all the things we could do on the internet to promote uh, galleries and ourselves, we made full use of them as much as we can, and it had an effect. We doubled down on our own expressions, our own individual power of, of creation, of creating, and that had an effect. 
And we had sort of a group effect that was so contagious, so infectious, that it went outside the arts community, arts community to the outer society. The, at one point, city government was pushing us away. Now they at least made token attempts to embrace us. Right. Now we have a general reputation that spans the planet. We did that, our generation, our group, and we could do more. Excellent answer. Um, I don't know if I asked, but uh, can you just give you in a short synopsis the mission here that you have? My well, mission here now is to get this thing going. <laughs> I know I don't want Dropbox go away. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm with it. Hang on. That's all right. Uh, there's that glare again. Which way is my head going to go? Okay. I got to stop that. Because the light's going in the mirror <laughs> right. and into my monitor and <laughs> blinding me. <laughs> okay. And so can you just a, a quick synopsis of your mission at the gallery here? Mission is to keep going. Make it a stronger place. Make it more, um, more a sense of permanence. You know, all the major galleries got some sense of it. What their what their over is, how they project to the to the uh, to the audience. It's a kind of marketing. Okay. And uh, we have our little reputation. You know, it bothers me when we stop showing shows for one reason or another, because then we feel as though we're falling off the top forty. So yep, yep. we're going to try to do something a little later on, get us back in Hitsville, wherever that is. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, I've been doubling down on my painting. I, it's, it's like each of us are our own solution. And the harder we apply ourselves to being ourselves, there's a, more, there's a greater effect. It's a greater effect, and it's positive. And... I don't want to speak for everybody. Sure. Some people, some people are comfortable with uh, their level of, uh, of expression, but there's always, always a chance to uh, improve, even at, as a group or as individuals. And that's just meandering, you know. Excellent. Um, did I ask you already about uh, what you contribute to the arts community? Well, this is this is goes back to the. Uh, oh, we're just going in circles. Well, what, am I, what I've said is my, basically my contribution. Okay. Okay. I'm sure I could do more. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I know it's, it's, a, it's a long road, but uh, just your, your thoughts on uh, the, you know, what, what the, the art community means to Detroit and the whole, I guess, the whole area. Well, considering what's going on, I can... What would you think what would happen if there was if, if the art community was still depressed and still uh, demoralized during the time this thing is happening with the DIA? Right. We probably would have lost the whole building, you know, because these these are uh, creditors. <laughs> they, they, private collections. Sure. It, they're, they're ransacking somebody's pyramid. That's what they're doing. They're not going to give up until. A higher, a higher court telling them it, it can't be done. Until then, they'll always try to pick at the edges of the DIA because they sense the vulnerability of their assets. And, uh, or they did. I think the situation has changed in our favor. I think it's over. I think it's over. I sure hope the, so. The grand bargain. Hey, uh, the, the, the donations are coming in. People understand how important art is. In a situation like ours, we were supposed to fail. We turned that around. Arts Community of Detroit turned that around. There's no artists from uh, Japan coming here and speak for us. We speak for ourselves, and we succeeded. We have our we have our cultural community. We have established our importance nationwide, really. Okay. And uh, we still have our art museum for for those who care. Excellent job, excellent job. Now I'm going to think of something.